Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the process of making some active wear for spring. So if you've been following along on my channel recently, you probably would have noticed that I have amassed quite the collection of active wear fabrics. And last year I tried my hand at making a pair of leggings and it went really well. So I'm really motivated to make some new active wear for the spring, especially as the weather warms up. I feel like I'm going to be getting outside a lot more often and just enjoying um, being a bit more active. So for this project, I'm going to be using these three fabrics I got from Blackbird Fabrics, and these are their matte active wear knits. And I bought these a while ago now, so I don't think they have them on the website anymore. But basically they're a mix of nylon and spandex and they have really good stretch at least 70% in both directions. So they have four way stretch and I would recommend that you always use four way stretch fabrics when you are sewing active wear just to make sure that you get the result that you need. So before we get started today, I kind of wanted to tell you some of the tips and tricks I'm going to be using when I get started sewing these leggings as well as how I'm going to be setting up my machine. So as you can see, the three colors of fabrics I have here are kind of like a deep foresty green, a light sagey green, and then a ready pink color. And I'm going to be doing some color blocking using these three fabrics. So I'm hoping we get a really cool effect in the end. So in terms of thread in the top of my sewing machine, I'm just going to be using this Guterman Mara Sew All thread and it's in this forest green color and I want the stitching in this project to kind of stand out and be a little bit of a contrast so that's why I chose this dark green color and in my bobbin thread I'm going to be using this type of thread this is woolly nylon thread and if you're not familiar with this this is a really useful type of thread you can use when you're sewing with very very stretchy fabrics the thread itself has a little bit of stretch and give to it so the result is that your garment sewn with this thread will have a little bit more stretch and flexibility and the thread will be less likely to snap. And it's also nice and soft against the body. So I'm just gonna get my machine set up now and then I'm going to do some test stitches before I start setting up my actual project just to make sure that I have my tension and stitch length correct. And that will ensure that we get a really neat finish with this activewear project. So let's go ahead and set up the machine now. So whenever I'm cutting out fabric, I always save the scraps so I can use them to test my stitches. And you always want to test your stitches on the exact same fabric that you're going to be working with if possible, because every fabric behaves differently. So you just want to make sure you're testing on the fabric that you're actually going to be using. So I'm going to be using two types of stitches for this project. I'm going to be using a triple stitch or a straight stretch stitch and I'm also going to be using a mock overlock stitch. Now last time I made these leggings I did try using a twin needle to do my top stitching and I wasn't so happy with the tunneling that I got. So this time I'm going to use the top stitch line as a feature of these leggings. So the stitches will be visible from the right side. So I'm going to join all my seams using the triple stitch and then I'm going to top stitch using the mock overlock stitch for that added detail, which I think will look really cool. So before I go ahead and do my test stitches, I do need to change out my needle. So friendly reminder that you should always be changing out your needle on a regular basis. And especially when you're working with a specialty fabric like I am today, you really wanna make sure you're choosing the correct type of needle for your project. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm going to link my video for beginner sewists above so you can get some tips and tricks from that video. But basically today I'm going to be using these super stretch needles and these are designed for fabrics that are super stretchy with a lot of spandex. So I would highly recommend that you use these for a project like this. If you don't, you're going to be having lots of problems with skip stitches and it's going to be a nightmare. So make sure you pick up these. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this needle in my sewing machine now. Also guys, I don't think I've mentioned this yet in any video, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for 2000 subscribers. We hit 2000 subscribers about a month ago and I was so over the moon when it happened. 
I was just a little bit busy with work at the time, so I haven't acknowledged it yet in a video because I haven't been filming that much recently. So I just wanted to say thank you so much and I hope you're enjoying the content on my channel. I'm really happy to have you here. Okay, so I'm officially all set up. I've already cut out my pattern pieces, so let's go ahead and start sewing this project. So let's get started on the leggings first. To save time in today's video, I didn't show you the process of cutting out all the fabric. So to start off, I'm going to take my pocket pieces and fold the top edge to the wrong side at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And throughout this project today, I'm using this double sided wash away tape to kind of base my seams together instead of pinning because I find I get a neater result when I do it this way. And I'm just stitching along the top turned over edge of the pocket piece. So then I'm placing the wrong side of that pocket piece onto the right side of one leg facing, making sure to match up the notches. Then I'm gonna use my double-sided tape to hold the seam together and base the seam allowances. And this will form the pockets on the sides of our leggings. So when it's all done, it should look something like this. Next, we're gonna take the side leg piece and place it right sides together against that pocket facing and pocket piece that we just made. And we're going to attach that seam at the bottom. And throughout this project, I'm using a triple stitch or a straight stretch stitch to join all my seams. And then I'm top stitching using a mock overlock stitch. So next I moved on to the gusset pieces and basically you should have two of these small triangle pieces which form the gusset and you want to base them together wrong sides together. Next we need to attach the gusset to the back leg pieces. So match the circle on the gusset to the circle that you marked on your back leg piece and you're going to sew from the edge of the back leg piece to that circle. Then you need to clip carefully into the seam allowance of your back leg piece to meet your stitching line. Then we're going to do the same thing, attaching the gusset to the other back leg piece. And in this case, you can again match the circle, but you're going to stitch all the way from the crotch part of the back pants all the way up to the waistband part, all in one go, catching the gusset as you go. When I was done this step, I pressed my seam allowances to one side and I top stitched using that mock overlock stitch. So let's go back and grab our side leg pieces again, the piece with the pockets, and we need to put this right sides together against the front leg piece, and we're going to join it along the side seam. Once we have the front pieces attached to the side pieces, we're going to attach the center front rise. So you can place your front pieces right sides together and sew along that center front rise. As always, I'm pressing my seam allowance to one side and then I'm top stitching using a mock overlock stitch. So now for a fun step, so we're going to place the front of the leggings to the back of the leggings right sides together and sew up along the side seam. And again, I'm going back and top stitching these seams as well. Then we're gonna go in and sew the inseam. So again, right sides together, you're sewing the front of the leggings to the back of the leggings. In this step, I wasn't able to top stitch because the leggings are fully formed, so I wasn't able to top stitch this inside seam. And with that, our project is starting to resemble a pair of leggings, so let's move on to the waistband. So you want to place the front and back waistband right sides together and sew up along the side seams. And you're going to have two of these waistbands once you're done. Again, I was top stitching. In this step, you want to press your side seams on one section of the waistband towards one side, and on the second waistband piece, press them towards the opposite side, so that later when you put them together, it reduces the bulk of the seam allowance. So next we're going to place our waistband pieces right sides together, matching up the seams and notches, and sew them together along the unnotched edge. Once this is done, we need to put some elastic in the top of our waistband section to help it maintain its shape. So you need to measure a piece of knit elastic that's the same length as the top of your waistband and an extra little bit to overlap. So you wanna overlap the ends of your elastic and sew it into a circle. Then you want to spend some time carefully pinning or tacking the elastic to the waistband piece and sew this in place using a stitch type that will stretch such as a zigzag stitch. 
So now that this is done, you can turn your waistband so the right sides are facing outward and the wrong sides are facing together. And you want to align the raw edges at the bottom and just um, base these in place for the next step. So now it's time to attach our waistband to our leggings. So you want to place the waistband right sides together and make sure the notches are lined. Match this up against the waistline of your leggings, pin it in place or use the double sided tape and then sew it together. And for this you want to press the seam allowances downwards towards your legging and again I top stitched in place. So we're almost done and the final step was to go ahead and hem the leggings. I did a double turn over hem so I turned my fabric over to the wrong side twice and then stitched in place. Okay and with that the leggings are done so let's get started on the jacket. If you're enjoying this video please subscribe and press that notification bell. So to start off, here's an overview of all the pieces that go into making this jacket. So first we have the sleeve piece and you need to cut out two of these. This piece is the pocket facing, cut out two of these. Next is the arm cuffs, two of these as well. This is the front bottom piece of the jacket, I cut two of these. This is the back piece and you cut one along the fold. Then we have two front pieces in a contrasting fabric. And then we have two side front pieces in the same contrasting fabric. Two collar pieces. I end up, ended up changing my mind about the color of these. Two side back pieces. And two front yoke pieces. So to start off, I'm sewing myself a guide stitch, which is a quarter inch away from the pocket opening edge and I'm doing this for both of these pieces. When it's done, it should look something like this. Then I'm putting my zipper right sides together against this piece of fabric, and I'm aligning the bottom stop of the zipper with the guide seam that we just sewed up. Then I'm sewing along the guide seam I made for myself using a zipper foot, getting as close as I can to the zipper teeth. Once that's done, I'm going to carefully clip into the fabric at the corners. For this part, you don't want to clip into your zipper tape, just clip the fabric. So once you've clipped the corners of that pocket opening, you want to fold the side front over the zipper and stitch across the zipper. And you're tacking that piece of fabric down on the opposite side to the zipper that you just sewed. And you can feel free to just stitch completely across the zipper here because this will also form your zipper stop. So then when you fold the fabric back down to the right side, it should be a nice neat way to finish the edge of the zipper. And once this is done, go ahead and top stitch all along that outside edge of the zipper. I'm top stitching at about a quarter inch seam allowance. And for most of this project, I'm top stitching using a triple stretch stitch. So that way the top stitching won't ruin the stretchiness of my seams. Now you wanna pin the center front and side front pieces right sides together and stitch. Again, you're trying to get very close to those zipper teeth. Once you're done, your zipper should be fully enclosed, and then you can go ahead and top stitch that piece as well. And once the zipper sections are all done, this is what they should look like. Test your zipper out so you can make sure everything's okay. So next we actually have to create a backing to our pockets. So to do this, we want to pin the right side of the pocket lining to the wrong side of the assembled pieces and stitch all along the raw edges using a wide zigzag stitch just to base these together. Once these are basted together, we can kind of treat them as one single piece, but now your pocket should be fully assembled. So next we need to attach the front yoke to the assembled pocket pieces. So just take your time matching up the notches here because you are pinning two opposite curves together. And throughout this project, instead of pinning, I'm using my double-sided tape and I found that was a nice option for me. So then we're going to stitch this together and then as per usual, we're going to press the seam allowances towards the yoke, so upwards, and top stitch on the right side using that triple stretch stitch. To finish assembling the front pieces of our jacket, we're going to get the front bottom piece and pin it right sides together along the bottom of the pocket pieces. Once you're done, you want to press the seam allowances 
downwards and top stitch. So this part's a little bit hard to see because my fabric is a very similar color to my table, but I'm pinning the side back pieces to the back pieces and stitching along those seams. Then I'm pressing the seam allowances towards the side back and top stitching them. Now we're gonna start working on the sleeve. So I'm grabbing my sleeve piece and I'm going to pin the cuff piece right sides together matching the notch. I'm going to stitch this in place and then press the seam allowances upwards towards the sleeve and top stitch in place. And this will kind of give the sleeve a look like it's cuffed, but it's more of a faux cuff than a true cuff. So the sleeves of this jacket are raglan style. So now that we have our front pieces and our back piece, we're ready to start attaching everything together using the sleeves. So we're going to pin the sleeve piece right sides together against the front pieces, matching up the notches and stitch this in place. Again, I brought my seam allowances towards the sleeve and top stitch them down. Then we're going to repeat the same process with the back sleeve. So we're going to pin the sleeves right sides together against the back piece and stitch it in place as well. And then we're going to do that nice decorative top stitching for the back part. So now it's time for a really fun part of making the jacket. We're going to sew the side seams together. So start off by pinning or basting the side seams right sides together. And we're going to sew all the way from the hem of the jacket up to the underarm and then to the bottom of the edge of the cuffs of the sleeves. And once this step is done, we finally have something that's really starting to resemble a jacket, but now we need to get started on the collar portion. So for one of your collar pieces, you want to fuse some stretch interfacing to the wrong side of the collar piece. And make sure to use your iron at a low temperature so you don't melt anything here. And then on this piece that has the interfacing, you want to stitch a guide seam about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch away from the edge. And you'll use this later when you're assembling the collar. So take your non-interface collar piece and pin it right sides together against the neckline using the notches that you marked to help you line everything up. And just take your time easing it in here because you are pinning a straight piece of fabric against a curve. So you just wanna make sure that everything is even and nice. And then go ahead and stitch this. So I did get a little bit confused at this part and I kind of installed my zipper in a different way than the patterns instructed, but I ended up figuring out what they were recommending you to do. So now that we have one of our collar pieces attached, we want to pin the zipper to the center front right sides together, making sure that the bottom stop is about an inch from the bottom edge. I had a lot of trouble with my zipper, which I'll talk more about in the end of this video, but essentially I couldn't get a zipper that fit well. So I ended up having to have my zipper pretty close to the bottom edge of my jacket. And I used a bias tape to hem the bottom since I didn't have much of a hem allowance left at the bottom. So to ensure that both sides of my jacket lined up evenly on either side of the zipper, I pinned the zipper to one side of the center front first, then I closed up the zipper and used a chalk to mark some key areas of the zipper, such as where a seam intersects on both sides of the zipper when it was zipped up. Then I unzipped it and pinned the zipper to the other side of the jacket using the chalk markings I made to help line it up with those key areas of the jacket so that when you zip it up, all of the different color blocking and everything will line up well. So I messed up by going ahead and doing my top stitching after my zipper was attached. You want to wait till the end to do the top stitching and this will make in inserting your collar much easier. So pin your other collar piece right sides together against the collar piece that's attached to the jacket, matching up the notches. Our goal here is to sew along the top long edge as well as the short side edges. Now, since I had kind of messed up here, I had to go ahead and unpick my top stitching along the top center front edges where my zipper was installed in order to get that piece of fabric to lie flat. And then once I did that, I was able to sew up the short side seams.
So once you've sewn the two collar pieces together, you want to go ahead and clip the corners. So clip the extra seam allowance before you turn it out to the right side. So on the inside of your jacket, you should have the collar piece that had that one centimeter seam allowance guide stitch from earlier. So go ahead and turn the seam allowance under, tucking in the raw edge on the inside so it's enclosed. Then you'll want to stitch this in place. You could stitch in the ditch, you could hand stitch. I wasn't getting a neat finish with the stretchy fabric, so I decided just to pin it in place and then top stitch from the right side. And I was pretty happy with the finish when I did it that way. So once that's done, you can finally go ahead and top stitch the front of your jacket. So you'll start at the bottom edge of one zipper, top stitching all the way up the center front, all the way to the top of the collar, pivoting, top stitching along the top edge of the collar, and then coming back down on the other side. So because I had a problem where my zipper was a little bit too long, I didn't end up having enough seam allowance at the bottom to do a hem. But I just wanted to mention I did use the recommended zipper size that was recommended by the pattern instructions. I bought the size down, but that zipper was way too short. So I'm not sure if the pattern should just be lengthened a bit. But anyways, I didn't have enough room to do a fold under hem. But I did have a lot of extra fabric, so I cut a long strip of my extra fabric. And I plan to use this strip of fabric to meet make a neat hem. So I pinned the strip right sides together all along the bottom of the jacket and sewed at a seam allowance that would line up with where the bottom of my zipper was. Once I'd sewn that stitch, I pressed the seam allowance upwards and pressed the rest of the strip of that fabric to the wrong side. I tucked over the raw edges to the inside and enclosed them and then I top stitch from the right side, getting a nice neat finish on my hem. And the final step was to hem the cuff of the pocket. So I did a simple type of hem where I turned the seam allowance over to the wrong side twice and top stitched in place using that triple stretch stitch. All right, and with a lot of hard work, we're finally done our activewear set. So let's do the reveal. Okay guys, I finally finished my work on this really fun two-piece activewear set. So let me tell you what I thought about the process of making this, my thoughts on the pattern and fabric and all of that good stuff. So overall, sewing this set was really fun, but it was a lot of work, especially sewing up the jacket, as there's a lot of pieces that go into this pattern, as well as a lot of kind of fiddly details like the zippered pockets. But now that it's all done, I'm really, really happy with it, and I'm also impressed that I managed to sew something that looks this professional. In terms of the fabric choice, I've used this Blackbird Fabrics matte activewear knit before, so I already knew I liked it, and I think it works really well in this project too. One thing that I wasn't so sure about initially was this color blocking and how this color combination was going to look. I thought it was going to look pretty good, but I had a little bit of doubt. But now that it's all sewn up together, I'm really happy with how the color combination turned out as well as where I chose to color block all the different fabrics. So I'm really happy with the overall style of the color blocked pieces. So in terms of sewing up the jacket, this part of the project really tested my skills because this is definitely more complex than other projects I've done before. So I'm really happy I managed to get a neat result. My favorite parts about this pattern are the zippered side pockets. I think they're such a nice professional detail. And I also like that the whole jacket is zip up and it separates at the bottom. So you can wear the jacket open or zipped up. And I really like this mock neck detail too. A couple things about this pattern that I didn't love. The first thing is the shoulders. I do find the shoulders aren't the perfect fit. There's kind of a lot of extra fabric there. These are a raglan sleeve design. So I think it would be possible to play around with the sleeve piece to fix the shoulders, but I have pretty broad shoulders and on me, there was actually a lot of extra fabric. So I just thought the shoulder fit wasn't ideal. And I also had problems with my hem. So basically, I used a suggested zipper length in the pattern and I actually ordered a few different zipper lengths, but I wasn't able to find one that was kind of the perfect length. 
I didn't end up having enough fabric at the bottom to do a hem. So what I did is I cut a strip of fabric and kind of made something resembling a bias tape out of that strip of fabric, which I used to hem the bottom. In the end, the result of the hem is really neat, but it was a lot of extra work. So if I made this again, I would lengthen these bottom pieces to give myself some extra fabric. If I found I didn't need the extra fabric, I could always cut it off, but I was definitely left with um, not enough fabric to do this hem because of the length of the zipper. And the shorter length of the zipper, like the next size down was way too short for the zip up jacket. So that was kind of the problem that I encountered. So a couple other things I might change next time. The cuffs of the sleeves, there's nothing wrong with them, but they're kind of like a faux cuff. Um, I might just make this into a real cuff the next time I sew it. So I would fold the fabric in half and then attach it to the sleeve rather than doing this kind of like faux looking cuff. That's just a design preference. It's not that big of a deal. But yeah, overall, I love this jacket. It's so functional, it's really breathable, and it would be appropriate for a wide range of activities. The design detail in the front where it's curved here, as well as this raglan sleeve design is just really, really cool. And if you make this pattern and color block it, then no one's going to have the exact same jacket as you. So another detail I want to point out about this jacket is all the top stitching I did. I top stitched using a triple stitch or a straight stretch stitch to make sure that the top stitching would still allow for stretch and movement. And because of that, it gave it this really bold look. And I think it looks great. I think it's what makes this jacket look a little bit more professional is seeing that top stitching. So I did the top stitching for all the seams on this jacket and I'm glad I took the time to do it because I think it helped give a really nice finish. Okay, and then you saw I also made these really cool leggings and this is the Seamwork Tino leggings pattern, which I have made before. So, so it was nice to sew up something that I've already made once before. I knew what to expect with the fit and I made them in the same fabric the last time as well. So this is also the Blackbird Fabrics matte activewear knit. And I've already given my thoughts on this pattern in another video, but to kind of summarize, I think this is a really well-drafted pattern. It fits me really well. And I really like the side pants paneling with the pocket detail. It gives the opportunity to do some fun color blocking like I did here, and I think it looks really cool. I changed up the stitches I was using this time compared to last time, and I prefer the result on this pair. So I joined all of my fabric pieces using a triple stitch or a straight stretch stitch, and then I top stitched using a mock overlock stitch. And that top stitching is what gives this really cool detail, and it almost looks similar to what you find on activewear from the store that has been uh, constructed with a cover stitch machine. So it kind of looks similar to that. It gives a really cool like design feature. So I'm glad I went ahead and did that. One thing I haven't really been able to perfect with these leggings is the bottom hem. So I think the next time I would use some knit interfacing to make this hem more stable because if it's even warped a little bit, it will just very easily stretch out and snap. So still working on how to get a neat hem, um, but that's the only kind of issue I have with these leggings. Other than that, they turned out really beautifully. So I would definitely make both of these patterns again, both the Seamwork Tino leggings and the Jelly jacket. I would make either of them again. It was a really fun experience sewing with activewear and I think I've really learned a lot throughout sewing both of these projects. So both of these projects took me a really long time so I think I need a little bit of a break from activewear for now but I do feel happy knowing that I have the skills to sew activewear and I'm sure I'll be inspired again in the future to sew a little bit more activewear as well. So let me know what you thought about this video and these pieces in the comments below. Would you wear something like this or is it a a little bit too bold for you. I'd also love to know if you've been sewing any activewear recently. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I'm posting lots of sewing related content coming up this summer. Okay, take care guys. Bye.